Hi, I'm Candice. And hi, I'm Katie. And we are conservation biologists with the Xerces Society. And we're out here today in a really beautiful meadow in Southern Oregon. We'll be doing some butterfly surveys. Yeah, and today we'll be uh, catching a bunch of different species and looking at different habitats that they're found in. And we'll also be talking about their importance and some things that you can do to help. So let's go. Yeah, join us. Okay, so we just found one of our first butterflies for the day. And this is a, a Western Meadow fritillary, also known as a Pacific fritillary. And this is one of our lesser fritillaries, so it means it's smaller than some of our larger ones. Um, but they're really common in open meadow setting. And these butterflies use violets for their larval host plant, so that's what the caterpillars are actually eating. But they're a really commonly found species in the summers here. So we just found another butterfly. This is one of our blue butterflies, it's Wadubals, and as you can tell it's kind of small, um, but blues are part of our gossamer wing butterflies, which kind of refers to their really shimmery, uh, beautiful colors. And blues, um, the males are usually the blue ones, and then the females tend to be more of a brown color, maybe with some bluish hues. But these butterflies feed on lupins, um, and the really, really cool thing about blue butterflies is that the caterpillars of some of these actually are tended by ants and the ants protect them and they produce this sweet liquid to entice the ants to hang out with them and take care of them. Uh, so it's a really, really cool relationship that they have together. We are in this really beautiful urban park in Ashland, Oregon, near the California border. And I just caught this swallowtail butterfly. Um, it's one of our larger butterfly species, and it's um, pretty commonly seen. It's a really beautiful yellow and black butterfly. And as you can see, it's missing part of its tail right here, um, probably because a bird or some other predator mistook this for actually its head and went after it. And this is actually a, um, a tactic that these swallowtails use to escape predators. Um, so this butterfly is still alive and well. And you can see uh, it has a lot of really beautiful scales on its wings, the black and yellow. And a really good diagnostic feature for a lot of our swallowtails is actually on the tails. Uh, they have these eyes that can be red or black or blue. Just to go over some butterfly ID features. Uh, as I said, their wings are covered in scales and a lot of species, even if they get wiped off a little bit, they can still actually fly pretty well. I'm holding it right now with a pair of flat nosed forceps and that's because I just put on sunscreen and um, a lot of times that can wipe off some of the scales with the oils in your hands. So it's good to be careful handling them, but they're actually really robust. So they're not as fragile as people think. This one, you can see it has its proboscis kind of curled up uh, right against its face. And that's what it uses to drink nectar out of flowers and different species have different length proboscis or proboscises. And it's basically their tongue. And it's like a giant straw that they use to suck up nectar from flowers. The antennae you can see maybe are kind of uh, clubbed at the end. And this is a really good way to tell a butterfly from a moth. The antennae of moths are usually either tapered to a point or a lot of the males of some species will have really, really feathery antennae. So this one has club tips to kind of come to a little um, knob at the end. So that's a good way to tell. So this time we caught a grass skipper. The grass skippers are some of our smaller butterflies and a lot of people don't notice them because they're very small and very brown, but I think they're some of my favorites. They have really giant eyes and very expressive faces, I like to think. Um, they have exceptionally clubbed antennae and skippers are kind of unusual for butterflies in the way that they hold their wings. They actually look like tiny little airplanes when they stick out their wings. So they have like two that stick straight up and then two that stick out to the side. And this is really pretty unique for butterflies. So this is probably very familiar to many of you, especially living in urban or even in some agricultural rural areas. This is our very common cabbage white butterfly. Um, also known as a cabbage moth. They're pretty simple looking butterflies, but still very pretty. Uh, kind of a yellowish white color. They have some really cool green speckly eyes. Again, you can see those clubbed antennae that are characteristic of a butterfly. And these butterflies are actually introduced from Europe. They're not native to the US, uh, but you see them everywhere. And they're actually considered often a pest of some of our crop species 
mostly brassicas, which are things like broccoli and cabbage, as the name implies. But sometimes you'll find their big green caterpillars actually eating things in your garden, and those are often these cabbage whites. So here we have another skipper species. This one, however, is a little bit more special maybe than the other ones that we saw. This is a Martin skipper. And Martin skippers are known from only a few places in Washington, Oregon, and California. And their populations we think have been declining. But we came to this historic site where skippers have been recorded in the past and we weren't sure if we were gonna find any today, but we did, which is really exciting. Um, so this is a male. They usually emerge before the females early in the spring. And they also use bunch grasses for their host plants. And they're usually associated with these wet meadows and more open areas um, in the Cascades, but there are also some populations on the coast. So this next one that we have caught is actually not a butterfly at all, but it is a moth. And this is called the elegant sheep moth. And it is quite elegant. As you can see, it has this really, really beautiful kind of pink and peach coloring. Um, as a moth, it's even hairier than a lot of our butterfly species. And a main feature to tell butterflies and moths apart is that moths can have really feathery antennae. And if you look, you'll see that this guy, it's a male, Ooh, mm -hmm. it has really feathery antenna. And this is actually used to kind of um, catch chemical scents that the females send out. And so it can actually find a female in the wild. But this is one of our really beautiful day flying moths. And it's often mistaken for a butterfly just because it's so ornate and so large. So please check out our other videos and have fun. Go out mothing and butterflying and see what you have in your neighborhood.